Happy Monday morning, everybody. I do like starting the week down here in our collection. So we thought we would start this week off with another visit with Chad. We always learn something new. He's over here. I found him. There he is. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Facebook. How's it going today? Good, good. So you always teach us something. What are we learning today? Well, today I thought I'd show you guys a few of the photos um, from a collection that we've recently started working on, the Smith Family Collection. And um, it's a really neat collection to work on. Um, a, because it's one of those weird situations that you find yourself in collections and archives a lot of the time where you find a box of photos or papers and you're not quite sure where they came from. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true in every collection in I have ever heard collection. about. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so, but you piece together little bits of evidence and all of a sudden you start realizing the story of how this collection came to us. And one of my favorite aspects of this collection is that it has some incredible photos of uh, a local celebrity of, of sorts, uh, Inga Anderson. Oh, and Inga, the dancer. Inga, the dancer, yes. Hildegard from uh, England, as she was known, or the blackout girl. <laughs> uh, she's a fascinating person. Um, so let's take a look at some of these photos. Sure. That's a funky box you're pulling yeah, them out of. Yeah, so... It's, this isn't how you found it, though. You've rehoused no, everything. we've rehoused everything. And we, there's, we're still in the midst of doing that. As you can see, there's this photo album that um, isn't in the best of shape. And we'll get into that in a All little right. while. But um, here's a great photo. of Inga right there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Now, so, so she was, she was a, a local dance instructor. And then she um, went out and struck it big. Um, Broadway, off-Broadway, movies. Um, she toured around um, as, a, uh, as part of a, a dance troupe. She choreographed. Um, she even uh, uh, taught at the famous Fred Astaire, Fred Astaire sorry, <laughs> uh, School of Dance. Oh, is that ever neat? Yeah. And the neatest thing about Inga, really, when it comes down to it, is what happened in World War II. So Inga was in England, um, and World War II starts. And she's a Canadian citizen, but what does she do? She's in England, you know, really close to the front lines. She decides she's going to entertain the troops. She's not going to come back to Canada. She's going to go and entertain the troops. And she was really the first entertainer to do that. Really? Um, yes. And um, <clears throat> she didn't entertain the troops away from the front line. She went straight to the front line. That's where she got the name Blackout Girl. Um, ah. There would be bombs and bullets flying by. She would perform um, routinely in, on bombed out buildings as, as, uh, as her stage. That's pretty neat. This is, this is actually in um, Prince George at the time. Oh, really? Or, or not at the time. This would be the 1920s here. You can tell hairstyle, clothing. It's like detective work when you're looking at some of these old exactly. pictures, right? Exactly, because a lot of the time we don't know. I mean, they, they don't come with a date attached to them, so we have to um, piece together as much information. No one piece of information is perfect, but as we put them all together, uh, hairstyle is, is, is a good example. Um, technology. Um, that's around like cars, things like that. They all help uh, tell us what's what's going on. Now you've got one picture in each one of these envelopes. One picture in each one of these envelopes. She made a lot of her own costumes. And these are all acid-free um, envelopes, so that's an important part. We talked about salts and acids and oils on your hands. That's why I'm wearing my gloves again, right? Right. Um, so uh, these are acid-free envelopes. They help filter out the light. That's um, we're we're really trying to um, keep them from deteriorating as much as possible. I mean, it's inevitable that they will eventually, and that's why we work very hard to digitize um, our collection so that they are um, preserved. Now, you said she made her own costumes she too. She made a lot of her own costumes, and we we had a lot of those on display um, when we had an Inga Anderson exhibit many years ago how many years ago was oh that you're asking the wrong girl i've been here so long i can't keep all of the years straight anymore i, I think it was 2011 somewhere around there 
2011, 2012. Um, yeah, there she is. So all of these photos were just in a box that we discovered on one of our shelves one day. Discovered on uh, two boxes, two rather large boxes, and this is just a small portion of it's. It's a family collection, so there's a lot of photos um, uh, that don't pertain to Inga Anderson at all, um, and uh, and those are also important for for again telling the story of Prince George, knowing um, how people lived. Sometimes landscape shots show wonderful change. That's true too. Yes. So one of the things I'd just like to show you here, as you can see, this is what happens when you don't wear gloves. Ah, that's body oils, just that's that's oils and it's and you can see how brittle the paper is. That's all the acid breaking down the fibers in the paper. The these areas here what's technically known as foxing. 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 And it's caused by things like dust and mold and iron contamination in these all, all working together. Um, dust is, is a really uh, bad thing to have in a collection because it's, it's hygroscopic. It holds water, it holds moisture against something. And as soon as you have something um, that's holding moisture against paper. You're going to have mold. You're going to have breaking down. This is a fantastic um, photo album of Inga going over to England. So as we're flipping through this, it's making me think that these all need to come out of this photo album these as well. These all need to come out of this photo album. Now, we will take them out. They will go in their own envelopes, but we'll also photograph each page so we know the context of the photo album, but as you can see, it's in, it's in pretty rough shape. It's uh, the spine is delaminated. Mm -hmm. um, use a, a little bit of a book trivia here. You should never ever lay a book flat open. It puts all the stress on uh, on the weakest points of the binding. So that's why you have these uh, ethophone wedges here yes, for it. Yes, exactly. Oh, interesting. Look at me knowing a proper term. There you go. So yes, this is, I, I, I always love that photo there. Oh, that's a good one. It's like early yoga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, some of the best parts of the collections are when you do find one of these boxes that someone's taken in on a weekend or someone's left on our doorstep. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And so yeah, <laughs> we had to figure out from little handwritten notes here and there. Um, the, so the collection came to us, um, I, from a, a man named Sven Johansson, and he was friends with Sarah Smith, and um, Sarah Smith, uh, her family, had the connection to, to Inga Anderson, um, and that's why a lot of, of these uh, Inga Anderson photos are in here. They are really wonderful pictures. Oh, they are. So would this have been her photo album? or this, No, this was her photo album right here. This um, documents her going over to England and this was 1930s. before the war? This was before the war, yes. Wow. Those cliffs look like maybe southern BC, maybe. On their way out? Yeah. It's hard to know. I've never done a boat trip across the ocean. So. Yeah, neither have I. And this is all you that are um, taking photos the old-fashioned way. Please, please, please always write information on the back of the photo, or if you have... Um, a photo album, please, 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 right in the photo <laughs> album. We love that. That's part of the uh, detective work, right? We, Absolutely. We use as many clues as possible. Um, for instance, the only reason we know that it was uh, Sarah Smith's great, great aunt or great great aunt. I'm not quite certain on that yet. Um, who was a uh, uh, a dance student of Inga Anderson's is because of notes made in in a photo album. Oops. See, it's very brittle. Again, that's the, the acid there. Well, and it's an expensive proposition when we're taking everything from its improper housing and moving it into proper acid-free. 100%. And it's it's very time timely. You can't rush through these things. You have to... Um, very delicately remove all 
all of these. And um, <laughs> hey, thankfully, we have a lot of time right now to, to do <laughs> things like that. Oh, you said that out loud, Chad. I have projects for you. <laughs> <laughs> I should know better than that by now, Tracy. Absolutely. So Inga Anderson was a Prince George girl who mm. really made it big. She did. She made it really big. Unfortunately, she did have an accident which um, um, made it, uh, she wasn't able to dance anymore. Oh. And she came back to Prince George. Um, and she's actually buried in the cemetery here. Really? Yes. Um, in the main municipal cemetery. Exactly, yes. Is there a headstone there if people wanted to go there in? There is. Oh, there interesting. is a headstone. This is her actually coming back to Prince George. i got to tip that a bit. i got a glare. There we go. There we go. Oh, well, yeah. Pacific Airlines. Wow. So that would have been 1958. And look at the traveling outfits, hey? Exactly. We People all do it in get, yoga pants yeah, now. <laughs> no one gets dressed up anymore to, to go. I mean, it was a big to-do to, to go traveling. Well, you know what? Post-COVID, who knows? Everything <laughs> yes. could change. Might, yeah. <laughs> so Inga stayed over in England all the way through the war. Is that right? Yes, all the way through the war. And then she moved to New York briefly after the war. Um, and had a modeling career. Ah. She was she was all over the place. She even held a speed skating record in BC for in the 1920s. Jeez. <laughs> she she did everything. She Pretty did everything. neat lady. Yeah, yeah. She was fantastic. <laughs> so if folks want to do some of this kind of work with their own collections, is there some place people can go to get acid-free materials to take care of their own collections? Yeah, I mean you can you can order them um, off the internet for sure. Um, they are quite expensive. They're 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 pricey things. So, I can vouch for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, we we get ours from Carr and McLean, but uh, but all sorts of um, companies carry these sorts of things. And uh, right now, I mean, you're standing in our our collection that has well over 1.5 million photos. Um, wow. We hold the Wally West collection. Um, thank you, City of Prince George, for purchasing that and, and donating it to us. Um, we hold the uh, Prince George Citizen Collection now. That negative collection goes back to 1958 and goes up until mm, the mid-90s, I believe. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure the cutoff date, but they, they like to hold on to some of those um, for a certain amount of time so that they can sell off those images if, if, if need be. Um, most of those are in negative form. So that's these, the Prince these George guys negatives. These here. Um, and um, uh, negatives are a tricky proposition because they do deteriorate um, sometimes very rapidly. So we, we, we're always checking on those. If Thankfully, we don't smell that, that typical vinegar smell when it's right. breaking down. Vinegar syndrome is what it's called. and uh, The negatives will start shriveling and the emulsion will shrink away from from the the acetate that it's on and each of these boxes is full of individual letters or individual envelopes holding individual photos like yes this. yes so this is the process that takes so much time this is the process that takes so much time along with the digitization process i mean they kind of go hand in hand right but um but it's it's a very time consuming and it, and it has to be time consuming you can't rush through it Otherwise, you make mistakes and things get damaged. Fair enough. So I know we're going to come back down here later on this week because we were going to look at some glass negatives. Some glass negatives, and we're going to talk a bit about um, different uh, photographic processes. Cool. So we're doing that on Friday. On Friday. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, then I am going to leave you to this work that you need to do, and I will say good day to everyone online. Thanks for watching, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We will be back with Headkeeper Sabrina tomorrow. So enjoy the rest of your sunny Monday, and thanks again for tuning in. Bye for now.